Hello fairy friends. We are back with our porcelain baby, our little crawler, and she is going up for auction as soon as she's all finished. So if you are interested in seeing how she gets made over and how we add some details to her, such as this little blanket here, some booties, and a little bonnet, then stay tuned. If you're not interested in following along with the video, I hope that you'll wander down into the description where you'll find a link for her eBay auction. Now, because she's not a regular porcelain doll that's just standing on her feet, she has um, one, two, three, and four points of contact um, six if you count her knees, which actually, yeah, her knees and her feet touch. So when she's displayed, the porcelain is touching the display area. So it would make sense that she would have a little something. And the doll artist might have made a little something that kind of matched with that. We don't know. It just didn't come with the doll. So I'm in the process of crocheting. A little kind of coordinating little um, blanket okay I have just finished going around the pink and just did one row um, I didn't get fancy with it okay let us um, tighten this up just a little bit. This is strung just like a, a regular doll would be, um, except for it has um, the addition of the um, loop coming through the top of the head, not inside the neck. So what I'm going to do is take the these four sets and I'm going to stretch this out and then clamp them and then that way um, I have a little bit of uh, slack here so I can get this loose of my sometimes oh, that's a embroidery needle I don't need that I need a little bit of a point to it sometimes uh, I have a little bit of luck picking it apart with a needle I say sometimes because it kind of gives me another little grasp. So I just stuck it into one of the loops so I could grab the other there. So if you have big sausage fingers like I have, that's the way to go. We'll see about this one. This one looks tight too. So I'm going to st stick that in there and then grab. There we go. Now be careful. I might let go of the um, leg. All right, now but because we have the forceps there, it's not gonna shoot back into the thing. All right, so what I'm wanting to do is tighten this up more than what it is now. So I'm gonna remove this since I'm done jostling it around and I'm going to um, just grab this and I'm gonna let the forceps go and I'm gonna grab some more because I want this to be tight. I need more um, length here if I'm wanting it to be tighter than what it was. And I tie once, twice, and just three times for good measure. Give that person who has to do this next a little extra challenge. All right, now this is where you be very careful. Let go of your forceps and then tuck the ends in here. And you may have to re-tie. You might have it too tight or it might still not be, um, it might be uh, still loose. Okay. I am liking that head. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do, repeat the same process but with the arms and I want to pick the side that's got the ends which is this side and pull it out 
put those forceps in and then tackle the knot. And we'll just do our little trick here again with the needle. Never do what I do, just <clears throat> lose track of your needle. And stick it in one of the strings and then grab for the other to undo that knot. Alright, and we'll do it. Okay, there we go. Now I'll put this safely out of the way and I'm going to do the same thing I did here. I'm going to let loose of the forceps and then pull even more. Just so I can get that. There we go. Now you could just pull completely the first time. You don't have to do it in the steps that I do. Just try to be as cautious as I can. Alright. And then tie. I hope this is getting tighter. It's hard to tell because I didn't really measure how much string was left over. We'll see though. We'll let go. You want to make sure you're holding the arm firmly because if you let that go then it's going to snap. Um, the string's going to snap back because it does, it's a cord with a little elastic in it and it'll snap and you might break your porcelain arms. Okay, and I'll take her off of this to see how she manages on a slicker surface. Well, you know, I'm thinking she's good. She can do, you know, all sorts of different little poses here. Alright, well, we're going to go and get her dressed back in her little outfit that she came with. And as I have said, this will, oop, this will be... Um, charity auction so by the time you see this um, I'll have put it up so you can go and check it out and then, um, see if you'd like to bid I am starting it at 99 cents of course as I had said it's not indicative of the actual value just to kind of start it out everybody can get a chance at it especially those of us who are paying attention and this was sewn um, if I hadn't said before this is hand sewn by the artist it does have a velcro closure so that's like a a no no for you if you don't really like that then I don't think it should be an awful problem but that's how the person chose to do it and that's alright sometimes when people make dolls there that can consider um, if it's for an older person or for a young person who doesn't have that dexterity again anymore to, or doesn't have the dexterity yet to do the uh, snaps, the Velcro is a really good option. I mean, if you're like a, a stickler for the um, snaps and or, or buttons, because I know even the snaps are kind of new considering that buttons have been around. Get her Velcroed up right, but the, the Velcro is a good option for older fingers and younger fingers too. There we go, and then she does have a little ribbon tie here, and it is a little frayed, so I'm gonna just tie it into a bow and See what we got left there. I don't think I'll need to replace that, especially given that they hand sewed it in. I'm gonna give it a little trim to clean that up a little. And she is all dressed and she has been cleaned up. She does have a little mark here, but that looks like from when she was um, fired in the oven, in the kiln, I mean. So there she is with her um, cute little afton. And then I um, 
started to crochet these booties. So I'm going to put a little uh, ribbon through them. But first I want to see, because I haven't tried them on her yet, to see if they're too big or not. Hmm, those look nice. Inside out. These might be inside out. Yes, they are. Wait, are they? Yeah, they were inside out. All right, let me tuck that yarn back in there. I'm having an issue here. In Gaelic, I learned a phrase, and it's a long thread, a lazy tailor. Well, guess what? I got a long thread here on my booties. All right. Well, I like those. Those are real nice. And I think rather than running a pink ribbon through, um, I don't think it needs to have any um, distraction down there. So I'm going to go ahead and use this narrow ribbon that I have here. And it does have tiny little cute white dots on it. So, and they're staying on really well. It doesn't really need it. Um, as far as to secure them uh, just for decorative purposes really and I'm going to run it through um, here and I know everybody has their own little methods and everything this might not be enough ribbon I want that dotted side to be there. It, it does um, tighten them just a little, just a tad, but mainly it's for decorative purposes here. There. Well, I think that is simple and sweet. And somebody did ask for a tutorial on how to make some uh, simple booties. So I will do a tutorial for these. Simple booties, though, how I don't follow a pattern. So, I mean, I have to be honest, I'm, as I have said before in other videos, I'm not a very accomplished crocheter, so if you do a search, you're probably going to find like a <clears throat> hundred videos of uh, better ideas that actually probably even make more sense than how I tend to do things. That's not even, you need to come over here, Ribbon. Um, so, uh, do look online. Um, and just look up booty, crocheted booty tutorial. I mean, I can show you how I do it, but sometimes I uh, I try to do the same thing every time, but sometimes I don't. I get distracted and I forget what I'm doing. <laughs> but I would gladly show, show everybody how, what, how I do it. Just like with all of my things, I always tell everybody, hey, guess what? I'm not the best by any means. All right, there's her little booties. And, and now we are going to go ahead and do her little bonnet. And I did get a um, request on this bonnet. So if you're interested in the bonnet tutorial, I am making that a separate video because this is going on a little bit too long. And here at the end, I'll show you finished pictures of her so you can check her out. Look in the description for the bonnet tutorial video and look for the link to the eBay auction. Remember, she is a charity auction. Um, she starts at 99 cents and 100% of the winning bid will go to St. Jude's. And if you're seeing this and the auction has already closed, please subscribe to my channel. I will be doing at least one charity auction each month. And I'd really, really love it if you guys would go over and check it out. And thank you guys for spending some time with me. And I hope you have a magical day. Bye-bye.